Sachuk and John Beck. I think we can check and see what our next meeting date will be. What did we lose? Oh, I think we just lost John. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, I don't see him yet. It looks like the next sort of, uh, if we're following the two week, the first of December looks like our next scheduled meeting. Mm -hmm. Fine with me. Yeah, right now it's good for me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think John's trying to get back in. I don't know what's going on. Let's see. He's on as an attendee. Got him. Oh yeah, there he is, okay. Okay, so um, uh, our first uh, topic of business is the regional sewer. Um, I really don't have anything to add and, and I don't see that uh, Brian is on. Um, but Lisa, could you ask Brian whether uh, the select board or um, Chris have reached out to Cohasset, excuse me, to Situa to see if we can have a meeting with them? Sure. And if they haven't, when, when can they? <laughs> Okay. All right. Yep. So, um, I don't know, Wayne or John, do you have anything on uh, on regional sewer? No. Okay. Wayne? No, nothing I've heard of. I'm, I'm anxious. Uh, to get what, heard. what did happen uh, at the select board? Um, I thought they might be considering doing something, but they didn't. Yeah, I don't know what, you know. I can't even remember what I did yesterday, let alone last week or so ago. Um, they did discuss it. Um, I think there was a consensus to do it, but I don't think anything has happened yet, which is why uh, if Brian was here, I would have asked him if anyone has from the town has contacted Situate to set up a meeting. So, and I think if we can formally ask them to do that, uh, at least so then we'll see what, see what kinds of movement we get on it. So, but I've heard nothing else, Zippo. Is there anybody online that uh, is from Situate that has any information? No. No, no guess? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, easements. Um, I did notice um, an email from Rod that uh, the easement letter has to go out by registered mail. Yeah. If we're, if we're sending out the letter along with the um, uh, release of easements themselves, then we very much want to uh, um, be able to track delivery of that. So I guess the question I have um, with regards to this is, it's, as I would presume that it benefits the town overall, but um, this is, I guess this is a, more of a rhetorical question than anything. This is going to be an expense that is um, picked up solely by the, the sewer board. Is that, is that your understanding, guys? by the North Cohasset part. People are doing the extra money now. Right, but I mean, we're, we're, we're gonna spend, I mean, between um, $7 times 300 plus, uh, if, that's a, if that's the cost for a registered mail, plus whatever the mailing, uh, printing, mailing, stuffing of envelopes, you know, we might be looking at five or six grand to do this. And is this us or is this the town? <coughs> I guess is my question. Who is paying? I mean, the town ought to pay for it since it's releasing the town's easement. Yeah. Well, that's 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 sort of the answer I wanted to hear. <laughs> um, um, so I guess, Lisa, that would be another question uh, to Chris. Uh, yep. As as to as to the uh, release of the easement, and I I don't know how they do it. Whether we just 
pay it and then they somehow reimburse us through the, the town coffers. I don't know how that internal accounting works, but um, I was thinking this is more of a benefit of the town than it is for us and that you know they should be paying it, my opinion. And I suggest that we uh, either have some correspondence or something to the people that are going to be getting the certified letters that a certified letter will be coming in the mail. Uh, I've had situations where many of them don't ever get claimed and, and they, people don't even care about them. And sometimes it's because they don't know what it's about or they figure that if they didn't receive it, then whoever's looking for something isn't going to necessarily get it from them. That's so a good idea. just a postcard or, or a quick little note or a little blurb in the, in the paper or something like that. I think we should have, and by the way, it'll also correct we do it first class just as a letter from the sewer commission to where, to them. They'll get it in their regular mail. If they don't get it or they have exchanges of address or anything like that, it's going to come back to us as a correction so that we're then not sending the official stuff to anything that isn't going to get delivered. That's a great idea. So I just... Uh, and maybe we do put something like a small blurb in the in the Mariner for those who still read it and, and um, you know, say something, to, you know, that what we're doing. Um, uh, Lisa, does the town have a, a postal a postage meter? Yes. Okay. So we could actually do that internally, um, get an open window envelope and just address a, a letter to everybody with the right, with the right addresses on it, right? It also makes them aware that there's going to be some, you know, some final end to this, uh, the extra charge. Right. Things. right. Okay. Okay, Any, anything else on easements? Well, as uh, far yeah. as, oh, sorry. Ed, right. Well, uh, one is that the, uh, the select board has, has scheduled their meeting uh, to, to address this question at their meeting on December 1st, the evening meeting, uh, where they will formally uh, authorize the uh, uh, release of the easement. And so um, some folks from the commission ought to be on that, uh, at that meeting, um, if there are questions, um, the the other thing is, when we were discussing, you know, we have a release of easement out there. Uh, it should be recorded. We don't want to pay the what is it, Dan, 106 bucks or whatever that whatever that number is. Right. Um, piece. Um, maybe what we do is uh, you know, offer that if they pay the the money, we will take care of the recording, which. Uh, I can do in our office, you can do it online and, and I've got a paralegal who's um, really good at that sort of thing. Um, and so we, we, could, we could offer that to them. Um, uh, you know, that was just an idea I had, I don't know, um, some other way. Do we do, we, do we do that where we just say, um, enclose your check for $107 and, uh, and, and put it in this self-addressed envelope or something back to either so, us or you. Uh, you know, you see and then the, um, five, 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 uh, 55, That's uh, fine. Because I don't think they're going to be able to do so, uh, it. Who's going to? One, two, three, four, five, six stores. Yeah. Where it would say 55,000 feet. Yeah. Well, yeah the, theoretically, they, they're able to do it, but uh, the uh, inertia factor, uh, yeah, so, some way we need to... Um, guide them, especially with the COVID thing. Probably not open, but we're getting some kind of interference. Yeah, I was going to say, who else is talking on this? I have an um, I have an office roommate. Maybe you can mute. That is on the phone. So let me tell you one thing. Mute your speaker. Pardon me? Yeah, mute your speaker. Okay. Okay, you just didn't talk to um just put yourself on mute. Uh tech our students. Uh there you go. Uh so Rod, what what I mean kind of a, a naive question. What happens if people just say screw it, I'm not paying? We have released the easement and um, when they go to sell their property, it's going to be hanging out there. Um, and oh, as a lien, as a lien against the property. No, no, it's just, a, it's just, 
a continuing um, easement in favor of the town uh, and uh, you know, likely at that point, somebody will say, you got to clean this up. Um, will we be uh, obligated uh, to uh, maintain the equipment until the easement's released? No, we are, we are, you know, we are releasing, um, yeah, th that's what the, uh, the uh, selectmen's vote um, oh, okay. so does. We'll, you know, be we are, we'll be done, but until it's uh, yeah. recorded on there uh, uh, with the um, whoever, um, it'll still yeah. be an easement on their property. There's, a, there's an easement of record. Um, yeah. Um, well, I'll and, have to clear that up if they choose to sell. Yeah. yeah. Rod, okay. can we have a single document that uh, is from the selectmen, et cetera, that is recorded that lists all the addresses and says that the easements have been abandoned? And then, of course, if it lists the addresses, it would end up probably being on their title as a release, but as a single document. Um, yes, we could do that. You know, we had, you know, coming in, we had individual easements, um, individual documents, individually recorded. Um, and, and we, I think we need to take care of that one by one, but that, that's, I think that's a, a good idea to do a, uh, an omnibus um, as well. I think that means that, that the town has released, them, released every single one of those properties and it is so much less expensive for us to have handle that as a as something, and then the homeowner can record theirs if they want to or not, because we've if you do the title search, you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. let, let me talk to my uh, my folks who are much better at title <clears throat> stuff than I am uh, to see if that <laughs> if that um, works. <laughs> but, yeah. And wouldn't the selectmen be happier by knowing that um, this is the list of the things that have been done rather than we're releasing all easements that are out there for North Cohasset or some other language? In other words, what are they going to do at their meeting in terms of voting to release it? Well, they are authorizing us, uh, you know, okay, you know, you know we, we, we have advised them that we think it's time to, uh, to pull the plug on this. And they are authorizing us to take the actions to uh, effect that decision. Even though they're not giving you the actions against something more specific, meaning an easement at 302 North Main Street, an easement at this, an easement at this, an easement at this. Well, I'm following the language of the town meeting vote that that, that is more general um, and, and uh, you know, putting the nuts and bolts in our court, uh, that's the way I drafted the the, the letter or the, the request and, and the vote that I have um, suggested they uh, adopt. Okay, Dan, you had some experience with this, with basically getting all the temporary easements and stuff. How was it done then? Yeah, I mean it was all done individually. <clears throat> I'm not sure if an omnibus document is actually gonna be recorded individually on the other deeds. So there may not be that paper trail that you, you're hoping for. Uh, in terms of um, the easements though, we still have one more step to go there and that's basically to differentiate the ones we still wanna maintain in the private ways versus the ones sit solely on the private properties. And um, in some degree that needs to be done in, in North Cohasset. Um, and possibly some decisions uh, need to be made. Because, you know, the town basically took it to the point where it split to a single service. Those, those uh, pipes are on private property. If we release those in their entirety, um, you know, one of those owners may not have rights to that pipe anymore. Um, this is on the other person's property. So we still need to take a look at those and maintain that, that egress or access uh, because I'm assuming we're still going to own the pipelines up to the point where it splits to a single service. Right. And you also have the situation where a, a, a neighbor may be upset with their neighbor and say, sure. get your pipe off of my driveway. Um, right. I have, and you have no rights now to that. 
to that right, pipe. Which is the reason why we need to maintain those, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But not, the, not the individual service lines and not the pumps, so. Yeah. The, the language in the vote, the selectmen you know, that I've recommended to the selectmen uh, you know, gives, you know, you know ha has el elastic language uh, to give us that um, um, option um, case by case. But, it, right. but yes, a decision has to be made before we uh, um, send out those documents to so, those particular so homeowners. So my question is, how do we differentiate that when we release the individuals? Do we substitute it with a less, you know, a more restrictive easement? Or yeah, we have to, we, we just change the description. We need to change the description of, of, of what is being released. Um, okay. So if we can identify those properties, we can figure do that we out. Have, do we have an, a list of those properties? I mean, uh, no, I mean, they're each individually executed. Most of them are at the ends of the ways. I could go back and look at the original layouts and I could guess at which properties they are and maybe Rod can pull those easements and we can just look at those. Yeah. How, How many, many do you think there are? Yeah. I would say there may be as many as two dozen. A lot of private ways, a lot of, a lot of combined services. Wonderful. Maybe even more. I mean, you've got- Well, we're, we're talking North Cohasset primarily, you know? Okay. Um, do we still wow. have any like on Border Street that, that, that they remember when we first started this idea the people said, we don't want to, we don't want to have the, we want the town to continue to take care of it. And they came to the board and there was one on Border Street there that said, you know, the town put it in, the town's going to maintain it. And I don't want to have that given to me. So in other words, that, that's outside of North Cohasset, but, but is that something that we're doing also because we may still be taking care of that? Or do we have well, to exactly? Voting, yeah, I mean, you voted to basically relinquish the pumps back to the users in all districts. Um, so, I mean, that's just a notification. Okay, we'll just... Yeah, I mean, if they choose to uh, debate that, that's why Rod's here. Well, we can blame we can blame it on the board of selectmen anyway. So they voted for it. <laughs> that's why they get the big bucks, right? They do. They get more than we do. Yeah. And you you have copies of the easements, basically, because I mean, you were so instrumental in determining, you know, where these things are. I do not. Oh, you, you don't have them on the. Aren't they on the plans? They're not on a, a master plan? No, no I mean, basically, they're, they are by occupation. So, um, you know, in the field when they're installing the services and everything, you hit rock, you hit ledge, you do something, the, 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 ch the path could change. And that's why they're always by occupation. <clears throat> so basically, wherever it ended up being installed is where the easement is, plus, you know, plus the 10 feet. But do we know it was finally installed? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay, because I'm wondering, like you say, if, it, if it's a, a curved easement going around here and it's 10 feet wide. Is yeah, for the most part, the estimate well. should show the general um, location of the, of the sewer. Um, but it is by occupation, too. So even if the plan is off, you know, it's wherever the pipe is, you know. Um, <clears throat> but... And you know, once we release it, it's gone wherever it is. So right, right. Okay. So the only thing we have to worry about is the common ones there. Well, and the private. But we ones. but we do have to come up with a list of of all the easements, and that's uh, you know Lisa has uh, dug up and found I think something like a hundred of the uh, actual easement documents. So I have you know book and page reference for those, but I'm going to have to get my um, real estate paralegal to uh, track down the rest of them so we we can say you know mr smith your easement recorded at you know book book x page y is 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 released and i can come up with a list of the ones that i believe would be applicable to the access rights right. okay we can do that 
Um, just on the same subject, uh, Lisa and I spoke to a printer. What was that, Monday, Lisa? Yeah, yesterday. Um, uh, as far as getting a quotation from him to stuff envelopes and you know do do the necessary stuff. Um, and so we'll as soon as that gets published, or as soon as he sends that in, we'll fire it off to the board so everyone sees it. Is that for the handbook too, Bill? I don't know. Say so that was a. Uh, you mean the, you mean the insert? Yeah, the, the couple of pages to the homeowners. Yeah, I home. don't know, know if we have any more of those left. Um, and if not, then we'd have to have them printed. And I don't know where the original would be. Yeah, that that, that original I just prepared this past, you know, summer or whatever. So I mean, that needed to be printed up. And I I'm not sure if you wanted to put it on cardstock. I, I know there was some discussion regarding that, but. Um, or laminate you know, when, was one discussion, but I mean, basically those would need to be printed up and inserted with the materials. Yeah, well, if you could send that to Lisa and we'll get a quote on a couple of different variants of that. I think laminated might be expensive, but um, yeah. you know, if the town's gonna pay for it, um, um, we'll get a couple of quotations anyway, see how it. All right, board would be good. <coughs> Lisa, you already have <coughs> Okay. The other thing I was yeah. going to say, based on that, too, is that yeah. I did speak with Michelle, and if it's under $10,000, then it does not have to go out to bid. Okay, good. All right. So we, have, we can figure that one out. I mean, we could, do, we could do one order for, if it's high, I don't think it's going to be ten grand, but uh, one order for the, the printing and, um, and stuffing of envelopes and another one for the, uh, the inserts. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do it in a regular size envelope, you probably just want to do it on paper. We'll see what, we'll see what the cost is and yeah, see how, how it goes. But Okay. Um, capital requests. Uh, Scott, you sent us some, uh, some things to, to buy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got a quote for the double door replacement. I was actually very excited about that one. What's that been, two years? That's been uh, since 16. Wow. <laughs> we originally quoted it. Yeah, I know that uh, the, the response that was addressed to Suez. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice that, yeah. Yeah, because that's all. So I reached out to them months and months ago and never heard back. And then all of a sudden, last week, that quote showed up in the, in the mailbox. So they must have gone through some files and, and re-quoted whatever. Uh, so we got that quote. Uh, How much was it? I'm sorry? 38.5. Plus installation. Oh, okay. No, that's... that's no, no, it's in... It's it's the whole thing, they don't do the paint. Yeah, they okay. don't do the painting, John. Oh, painting, that's right. Yeah, no painting on them, which is okay. I think What's the fact the that they're going to get rid of the doors is a big deal. Is it stainless steel? Uh, that I don't know. I don't know that answer. I don't. I don't believe it's stainless steel. So it's something that has to be painted. Correct. Correct. Uh, the other one we got. Uh, we got the silencer. The three silencers for the blowers. Uh, we had a little misprint on the sheet there. It says two. There's actually three. So the the <clears throat> the price would be another twelve hundred dollars. Is that like twelve and change? Uh, and we the other the third one we got was the grit screw. Now the grit screw that number was just to buy the grit screw. There was no installation. There was no anything with that. Uh, Who is? I'm sorry. Who does the installation? Uh, we'll have to find maybe like an RH White or a, a Aqualine or. Uh, I think we used DNC last time. DNC did it last time. Uh, so that's. How much? Uh, 28. No, for the installation. That oh, that we don't know yet. That I haven't. That we haven't gotten a, a quote on yet. Uh, I 
can't imagine that's going to be very cheap, providing the fact that a crane is going to be involved in the tight space uh, back there. Uh, not not quite sure what that number is going to look like. Uh, it's not going to be a, a small number, that's for sure. Uh, although I thought the number for the screw wasn't astronomical. I, I thought that was going to be a little bit higher. Uh, so those are the three new, new updated quotes that we got uh, for your review, approval, questions. We need um, to get a, a second price on the door. I know it took us 15 years to get the first price, but <laughs> does that have to go out to bid because it's significantly over the $10,000 or no? Or do we at least solicit solicit a bid? And if we can't get anybody else, then then you've got a single one. That's what that's the install. Yeah, and, and and how much was the grit screw? The grit screw itself was twenty eight k. So would so that's the same the same thing would apply, Wayne. Right, if we're over the ten grand there. Well, let, let me ask you this: Are these uh, proprietary? Uh, not so much the door, but is the grit screw? Uh, proprietary in that it fits into the system and the design of the plant and then we can't really go get somebody else's? Correct. Correct. Not without changing everything that we have back there. Again, I, I would view these probably as maintenance and replacement items because everything here is new. It's basically a replacement. And if you can just funnel that through wooden and carring, have them hire, the, you know, get some prices and have them hire themselves a cheap contractor. I mean, you can check with Lisa, but I think that would be acceptable. Yeah, maybe Lisa, you should ask Michelle if that's cool. I thought the, the doors would cost as much to install as they, they cost to buy them because it's gotta be some welding and all kinds of things to, to be able to support it in the opening, right? Or is, right. I mean, yeah, I mean, installation could be 10 or $15,000, I would think. Wow. I mean, we tried to get the prices back in, you know, 2012. Yeah. That, that price isn't too far off, you know, when we were getting rough estimates. So. Right, but, it, but the 30000 the 40000 is not an installed price, is it? it is. But yes, yes. That's it soup is. to nuts. That's oh, everything. That's oh, new God. doors, install, bring the old doors to the town dump and get rid of them. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, good. Any closers on so, that too, Scott? I'm sorry? Any closers, retainers? How were they doing that? That that we never finalized uh, with them. Uh, I imagine we're gonna have to at some point. That, you know, obviously. Uh, yeah, but, that's important because if those, you know, those are like kites in in a gusty wind. Right. right. You, need, you need some pistons and some chains to safeguard so they don't tear off the hinges. So. Right. You're probably gonna be adding a couple grand to that then. Well, that's safety important too. Never mind. Yeah. Um, uh, does anyone want to make a motion that we approve the purchase of this subject to um, uh, our procurement rules, the town's procurement rules? Do we have the money? I believe we do. Well, actually, I hear that you're the, you're the uh, chairman of Gazins. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to make sure we do. Yeah. Sub subject to us having ca uh, capital. Um, <laughs> Well, and I think, uh, is Lisa still on mute? I think. In here? She is, okay. I don't have a capital thing in front of me here to look at it. Um, why don't I do this? We'll check and make sure we have the cash and then I'll send out a, uh, uh, or have Lisa send out a uh, notice to the board um, uh, asking for a vote on this so that we can, uh, one way or another, get this going uh this week all right okay subject to, uh, so we could we could vote now subject to having the um, money in our budget to pay for it including a uh, reasonable estimate of the installation costs that are uh, <clears throat> less than clear at the moment is that is that a motion <laughs> 
Second. Second wishing Mark Lee Yeah. Uh, well, all in five favor say aye. 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 Okay. So um, and then we'll look at uh, Scott whether we push it through you as well through Wood and Current. Okay. And we'll be really? back to you. We'll be back to you as soon as we hear from as soon as we get the answer. All right. Okay. Yeah. The Debian C path is clearly the way to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, white paper responses. Um, I haven't had any since uh, it, it went out. That one, you know, the day it went out, I got one minor call. Other than that, nothing. We didn't get anything from any of the select board for whom this was prepared in the first so, place. Well, um, I, yeah, I'm glad you brought that. I did get a, uh, an email, excuse me, a phone call from Corey uh, asking questions about it. And more of it was just general questions on the operation management of the sewer plant and, and what, what the board does. Uh, there was some discussion on, on regionalization and you know, what my, and I only gave my opinion since I was the only one on the call, but um, it was very innocuous, uh, more background and more sort of fill-in material um, that he was looking for than specifics on why, how, how much, all of that sort of thing. Yeah. So. Hi, Bill. Can you hear me? Uh, it's Brian. Yep. Uh, so, since uh, we had the meeting with the selectmen last week, um, we talked about your white paper and all the appendices and reports that Lisa had posted online, and um, the decision was to go with a, uh, a third-party engineering firm to develop uh, a, a strategic planning uh, kind of decision matrix based on, you know, condense and uh, synthesize all the information on all the reports. And then uh, with a Cohasset centric look as, as uh, everyone was wishing and come up with a decision matrix so that you and the selectmen can, um, you know, keep discussions or have the next discussions on, uh, you know, with kind of a decision tree. Um, and so we solicited three firms waiting on proposals um we were thinking three public meetings uh initially a stakeholders meeting including one or all of you uh, depending on how you want to do it uh selectmen a uh, planning board and uh, or master planning board and i guess whoever else you might think uh just to kind of make sure that they capture the questions that we want to ask um, or, or put into this decision matrix and then um, and then two other public meetings to use as you want. Well, I guess one of them would be the final deliverable, which we're anticipating early January. And, and, and is the town paying for the study? Yeah, it's coming from either engineering funds, uh, DPW or uh, regional funds. Okay. And, um, uh, I asked this question before. I didn't know you were on the, uh, maybe you weren't on, but when I asked, um, has anybody from uh, either the select board or, or Chris contacted Situate to arrange a meeting between, you know, like an introductory meeting between the sewer board and maybe their town manager or their select board? I haven't heard anything uh, to that effect. Uh, Lisa, have you heard anything on that? I have not. Okay. Could you, could you um, no, ask, I, was, was that a request from, was that a request from you at the meeting? No, that's a, that was in the white paper itself. Okay. So, so the request is you want to, you want to have a meeting with, with Situate and Situate sewer board, our sewer board and your sewer board and Situate sewer board. Yeah. Whoever, that whoever the that there is. Yes. Just so we can sort of, you know, uh, not sort of, um, there are a lot of misconceptions that they think that we're, you know, dawdling and not not want to do anything. And I want to make sure that we clear that misconception up, and then maybe start the groundwork for some uh, future discussions with them. Okay. Also, All right. Um, um, it was also a request of uh, Corey, both with respect to Situate and Hull, that uh, we crack that door open. But that's really the job of the town manager, and it was clearly pointed out in the white paper that it was his job to do that. So 
I guess nothing has happened. Well, so the, I mean, the white paper uh, was well received. It was just, um, I guess, uh, you know, it was a compendium of, of thoughts and comments on on all the the history of the sewer department. But it, I think, um, after reading it, everyone said, well, you know, we should have kind of a more of a guidance uh, decision major stock document. You know, if we want to stay within our capacity. What path? What 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 do we need to go down? If we want to expand capacity, what does that do? Things like that, or right. you know, in, including nitrogen limits. Uh, what happens if we go down? Uh, the um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. The um, so I'll ask Chris, Lisa, if you could, um, you know, if we could ask Chris on setting up those meetings. Um, yep. I'm not sure if that was done after the last meeting. And uh, just one other thing. So I've had conversations with two firms. I'm waiting on the third firm. Uh, one of the firms has been engaged by Situate and Hull individually to do other type services, uh, OPM services for for Hull. And um, on Situate, I think it was for des some design work. Um, so I'm asking you guys, what do you think should, do you want to include them in the mix to, de to develop this co-asset centric decision matrix, uh, matrix if they're currently contracted with Hull and or Situate in other capacities? I'd say no. I, I, I would rather have somebody that is not connected with anything and to get a fresh set of eyes on it. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I figured, okay. Fair John, enough. you were going to say something? Uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. It ought to be an independent evaluation. That seems to be yeah. And to be to be fair, they they brought it up, you know, as a potential conflict or or perceived potential conflict up front. And said, listen, you know, I want you to be aware of this. Yep. Talk to the commission if they feel it's a conflict. You know, we won't spin our wheels making a proposal. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk yeah. to them after this. And so, Brian, just so you know, just so you uh, know, I did have a very quick uh, conversation with uh, Diane Kennedy, uh, and she she did voice some. I won't say it was critique, but you know, she said, "Well, I thought that there's going to be more in this white paper." And I said, "Well, that was the purpose of a white paper to give a uh, a broad overview of what uh, what we're doing, how we've done it, and uh, with the inclusion of that." Uh, study for the study uh, uh, give you an idea of what could be done. Um, and you know, that it's my, my, uh, my understanding and definition of a white paper is just what is exactly what we sent to the town and um, you know, doing something if they, obviously if they wanted more information or want to do it, that's fine with me. And, and again, it was just my opinion on it, but um, you know, I, I think uh, I, I, I won't say, I think, I know we delivered what, we said we were going to deliver and, and not a, uh, a long-term investigation of uh, all of the different sort of sewering permutations that the town could have and 3A and all that other stuff, so. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, I think, I think it's, you know, it's an iter iterative process. So you guys right, it is, took yeah. the first step. You, compi you compiled everything. You, you made an abstract, you know, that's what the white paper was. It was an abstract on every report that you put in the, you know, the compendium of, or, you know, the appendices. And, and then the next step is condense all that information and try to come up with a kind of a, a decision matrix, you know, strategic planning, something condensed that everyone can digest and have the next discussion. Uh, Brian, let me ask you a question. Um, <clears throat> do you think there is any question in anybody's mind what the sewer commission's position is on strategic uh, uh, or regional sewer issues or options. Is there any question what our position is? Uh, so I, I'm, it's totally clear for me, uh, you know, you guys, uh, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, you're, you're, you're not in favor of regionalization going to Hull, um, the Hull option, I can say, um, but, and when I've talked to the consultants I've talked to, I said, you know, we're, we're looking at, the, at this from a Cohasset perspective, not just uh, a regional perspective, but what's in the best interest of Cohasset. And part of this decision matrix is, 
what if we stay within within our existing capacity? What are those options and what does that mean? So it's not just how do we sewer more areas? I think it's if we stay within our capacity, take I and I, get I and I under control, what does that look like? How much more can we sewer? If we want to go beyond that, what are the implications of that? So um, again, this this next step is not just gearing towards regionalization. It's just asking the questions that need to be asked. Yeah, and, and Brian, I, I think maybe to refine the position um, of the board and John and Wayne, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I think the position with regards to situate is under the cur current uh, char uh, fee mechanisms that they have given to us and their, I'll say it, intransigence to negotiate, we're not in favor of that. Now, if they decide they want to do something that is in the best interest of Hall and Cohasset, I would be open to talking to them. Whatever. Yeah, that. I think um, uh, I, yeah, I can't speak for anybody else, but I, I'm pretty clear on what your position is. And I, I agree with you that, you know, having a no, a no negotiated uh, set fee yeah. going to Hull is yeah. it's not, kind of a yeah. non-starter. Yeah, N not negotiating is not negotiating. Yeah, I, not non negotiable. Brian, I think that we we still want to talk to Situate because Situate is affecting our, of course, nitrogen level and things like that. And it's crazy for us to to spend money, you know, um, th that will be greater to the to the to the residents, for instance, of South Main Street that we'd like to sewer, but we like to sewer it because we want to clean up the area next to it. And then if you just look across from South Main Street and the North Situate, and you see Border Street there, and they're going to be putting more houses up now because of the, the uh, removal of the farm, uh, that that's going to be putting things back into the ground again that are going to affect our harbor and stuff. So yeah, we'd like to, and, and by the way, I firmly believe that not many people in, Hull, in Situate knew that they had a sewer pipe in North Situate running all the way to the plant. And to me, their interest should be, and maybe our consultant goes ahead and says, you know, really, as they're looking at Situate, looking at Holland, and primarily being on our, on our court, that there are things that others can do. And if we came up with some solutions that maybe aren't regionalization, but are, uh, are important to each town, um, that would make sense. Uh, and I think, secondly, I don't necessarily want to stop sending flow to, to Hull, of course, for the Hull Street properties and, and avoid paying a million or so dollars to, to you know, go down Hull Street, try to get those, those customers to turn around to get in the, the end of Jerusalem Road and get onto our system and come back to, to uh, our plant. I'd like to have some, I'd like to have some cooperation with Hull. I just don't want to pay, uh, I don't want to be the person who is, um, has to pay whatever they charge and whatever they want to charge and sort of isn't a, you know, a fair person where for 20 years they were a fair person. So. Yeah, I, so I guess the next steps on those individual meetings with, I guess, first situate and then I guess haul it a later to talk about the IMA. Um, do you, and I'm asking the board collectively, do you want to have a, uh, I, I don't know that Situate has a sewer board. I think they're kind of a town department. Do you want to have a public meet, a public meeting or, uh, you know, I don't know if we can, can we have a, uh, a private meeting with, with the board and Situate? Well, we, we, may, we can have a, we can have a, you know, if one of us wants to meet with the, uh, what's his name, uh, Boudreaux, the town manager, who was at, well, yeah. the, meet the meetings that I was invited to, he was there. Um, if, uh, but anything else, we would have to, we would have to post it if it's, you know, more than two of us. Um, but I don't think, I don't see any harm. I don't see any harm in doing that. I think well, let me ask you a question. I, I remember at least were, were two of you at any of those regional meetings we had at Situate Police Station at any one time. Were there two of you there? I don't know I that don't, we posted those. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I, I mean, thought that they were posted no, historically. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. I've been with I know with Wayne. I'm not sure 
and, and maybe it was Bill, <clears throat> but they were some time ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, one. Of, let me express uh, uh, some concern. <clears throat> Part of the problem has been, and I'll just give you a very brief. I, I ran into a nurse on a visit um, to a, on a medical visit <clears throat> from Situate, and she was really upset at what was going on in Situate with regard to sewer. And she said, I've got a lot of friends who feel the same way. They seem to be headed off in a direction that totally ignores the needs of our town and in particularly the part of town she lived in, which I gathered was somewhere in North Situate. And um, uh, she was particularly upset with the, uh, uh, the deal that was cut with uh, the uh, developer on uh, uh, the, the big new development. Our, our Toll Brothers. Yeah, the Toll Brothers uh, million dollar uh, buy-in to the uh, Situate sewer. Uh, treatment plant. So uh, there, I think there are a lot of people out there who are not very happy in situ with the way things have developed. Part of the reason for their lack of happiness is everything has gone on behind closed doors. And I don't think uh, we should be part of any, quote, secret discussions, end quote. Nope. Uh, not that I object to having uh, a member of our board be involved in a meeting that is not necessarily public, but the results of that meeting, I think we should pledge ahead of time, will be absolutely transparent to anybody who wants to uh, uh, ask any questions. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, number two. All right, then, then, then the next meeting we set up, I think we'll post it as a sewer uh, commission agenda and invite those from Situate uh, as panelists, Lisa. Um, and then, you know, we can control who, so we don't get Zoom bombed, we, you know, who, who enters the meeting and can, can talk, I guess, as Lisa normally does. Yeah, but I, I, I think, and again, just my opinion, I think the first meeting with Situate um, should be with just Situate. I don't want, and, and, and sorry, Scott, I don't want to have Woodard and Curran there, and I don't want to have uh, anyone else there with potential agendas that may not be in line with what our agenda is. And I would, I would prefer it to be um, Situate, and, and however that is made up, and um, and 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 the board. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So we have enough information to plan it and we can we'll go back and forth in emails on logistics and who's, who's attending uh, when we do it. All so, right. okay. Uh, now a comment, if I may, on the um, uh, additional uh, questions uh, that the select board has chosen to spend taxpayer money on a, an engineering study of something that we may already have the answer to. Uh, I don't want to see us waste taxpayer money on bring me another rock. Uh, yeah. So, so this is not, and I, this is not a new study. It's not an engagement. It's, it's a, a, con, a condensed synthesized report of all existing information that you posted on the, uh, on the website, along with, decision makers so uh, been very clear that they're not studying anything new it's basically uh, coming up with a condensed version of all the facts that are uh, it's pretty lengthy to digest you, you know if, um, to go through all those attachments Ryan do they have uh, a budget for this yes and what uh, so no no I'm wait, waiting on proposals but um, yeah. I mean, you could spend fifty or a hundred thousand dollars. So guess. we won't do that. Yeah, no, I'm thinking more in the in the ten ten to twenty range. But I guess we'll see what proposals come in. So three meetings and a brief report or a brief uh, hmm. you know, condensed report with the decision matrix. I think the hardest thing is going to be the decision matrix and getting the stakeholders. I guess. Uh, thoughts and, and uh, questions that they want to ask on that. 
and then what path each one goes down and what, what other questions are resultant from, you know, asking or going down a certain flow, flow diagram, you know, path. Will they be meeting initially with the sewer board and the selectmen to go over, you know, the, the yeah, so that, that's, that's the idea. We'll, uh, We'll get the proposals and then we'll schedule a meeting either with all of you as posted or if you want to select one of you as a uh, representative. What will the selectmen do? Have one person if we have one person? I, uh, yes, I assume. Okay. So maybe it's better to have it open, meaning, you know, to everybody so that you get the... I don't know if you, if you have one of somebody, you're only going to get the opinion sometime from that person. Like if you pick one select person sure. versus another select person versus you'll get, you know, a good range of what's in different people's minds, at least for yeah. one meeting, I think. But So I think um, the conversation that you guys had with the selectmen, it was just a joint meeting. Um, I think that kind of venue is with a consultant would be good. All right, we'll see what happens. You know. Okay. But this is, uh, you know, this is obviously with the deliverable in January, this is gonna be fast. All right. Okay. Okay, if we're done with that, I, I want to go to my, uh, my, always my favorite subject on these meetings and that's abatements. Lisa, do you want to walk us through these? Guess not. I have to unmute. So the first one up is um, 58 Margin Street. And um, this came up at the last meeting and you requested more information. When I requested the more information from the homeowner, he just sent that the letter that I attached to the um, email I sent you yesterday. I don't, I, I mean, I'm looking at it. I don't see anything that is conclusive that should change our minds from anything else. Anyone, Wayne or John, do you think, what do you think? I'm, I'm looking at it right now uh, offline here, 58 Margin Street. <clears throat> I don't see anything different. I mean, it's, it's it's just very difficult for us to make a you know make sort of a a decision without you know out really knowing anything. I mean, it almost it almost <laughs> would be you know in some of these abatement requests, it would be almost worthwhile for us to see photographs of the property, um, that kind of thing. Not that I want to do that now, um, uh, but right. I mean, I, I guess realistically, I don't think any of this, I mean, I don't think the, uh, what does he have here? Uh, 10,000. Um, I mean, that's a gargantuan amount of water for from what it he is. had been doing. Huge. I mean, he must've been watering stuff 24 hours a day. Hard to figure, isn't it? Yep. What kind of property is it? I, I guess you asked that question of a photograph. I mean, what the heck is he watering with that much water? 
Yeah, if he's on Margin Street, John Mullen, John. Oh, I think I know this guy. Um, I mean, if everybody in town who waters their lawn put that much water on, we would have drained Lily Pond a long time ago. That doesn't make any sense. Something else is going on. Crazy. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's what I looked at. I mean, if every summer he's watering the same property for, you know, what is it, 2,500 gallons, and this, this it goes up to 10,000? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure some, you know, we are in a drought, certainly, but we were in a drought, uh, we started the drought last summer. And I thought we had a, uh, a, 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 con a control, uh, use of water for irrigation purposes uh, during this drought. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was like uh, eight, eight to eight or something like that. You no know, hand watering only and then nothing after eight to eight exactly. in the morning, something like that. So, um, I mean, I, I might be convinced, you know, to give him something, but I mean, I, there's nothing here that tells us, you know, that's that. How much does he, he, he wants what, 700 and something dollars, right? No, he wants 1,022. 1,022. No, that's his total bill. That's the total. Oh, sorry. He wanted 700 and something dollars. Is oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Pretty small one. We'll give him half of that, give him say 300 bucks, something like that. I think 300 bucks is enough, yes. Wayne, do you agree? I believe we uh, uh, yes. in a, an abatement of $300. I agree. And should I mention something about installing a um, irrigation meter yeah yes and he has to yeah because he we, we're not gonna we're not gonna do this again so that's a motion i made 300 bucks and he has to install a, a, a an irrigation meter yep. um i second wayne um all in favor yeah, yeah. aye 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 okay Next up is 49 Ripley Road. Um, she says she's been running sprinklers and um, they have an in-ground pool. Both required watering. She doesn't have a second meter. Does she have a second meter? Not that I can tell. She's got an in-ground pool and does not have a second meter. Somebody's, you know, that's not, that's not very. That's, <laughs> well, I won't comment. How much does she want? So um, actually it's he, Alan. Um, he said he's going to have a sewer meter fitted to definitely avoid overpaying in the future. Uh, he is asking for um, 10,600 um, cubic feet abated. I've averaged it out. It's about 565, 36. But if oh. I based on the, if I do it based on his calc, on his request. Thank you. 
He's asking for a th um, over a thousand. If I do it based on his, but I just averaged it out, and the average is five sixty-five. Okay, I will. I will express my opinion that I don't think anybody who has a, a an in-ground swimming pool and does not have a second meter should be given any abatement for asking his fellow sewer users to pay for filling his swimming pool, period. So. Let me just see what he says. I'm just opening it up so I can look at it here. Um, Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, it, it, he's, he's basically saying it's, it's he's using it to fill his pool. I'm not sure if that's a new pool or not. It looks pretty new. Well, it's filling his pool, but is the pool water going into the sewer? No, no, it's, of course. No, no it's not. That's not the point. And, and I understand his his request. But I'm, I'm just um, expressing feelings. The, the town didn't abate anything, did they? The town didn't give them anything back for the water. Right. No. Of course not. It's just that there's no way of measuring what he's what he's right. Doing. Exactly. Yeah. That's the problem. Exactly. Which is fixed by having a second meter. Has he ever requested a rebate before? Not that I am aware of. How would you be aware? Um, looking in the file um, for abatements. So he, he, has, he has not requested a, uh, an abatement prior to this one. I think this is a new house, too. The pool's been there since about 2013. All right. Uh, okay, first time. In-ground pool. It didn't go through the sewer. I move we uh, <clears throat> approve one half of the requested amount with the condition that he has to install a second meter. And we will not <clears throat> entertain further abatements. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next up, we have um, 15 spin drift. They had a water leak that uh, they had repaired. Um, he didn't have a copy of the invoice, but he had a copy of the check that he wrote out to, for the uh, repair, which I attached. That's a hell of a water leak, right? 6,000 gallons? Is that what we're looking at? So uh, does anyone know the plumber, this guy, Perino? I don't. I don't. Uh, 
Wayne, do you know him? No. Did the water department give him an abatement? No. I just Googled the guy, I can't find him. So why uh, did the, uh, do you know why the water department didn't give him uh, uh, an abatement? They typically don't give oh, right. abatements. This was a leak in his service line. Before it got to his house. Is that right? <clears throat> It doesn't say that. It doesn't give you a... Um... You know, maybe what, you know, it, I wonder where this leak was. And I think we should get an invoice from the, um, from the uh, plumber who may or may not exist. Yeah. I think we need clarification yeah. Information of where the leak was from a uh, registered plumber who fixed it, apparently. Somebody fixed it. How long is it running? That was the question. Yeah. I don't know. In other words, if, if it took them three or four days to get someone to fix it, we shouldn't be paying for that. Right. Yeah. Can you ask those questions, Lisa? Yeah. And did it have in there the act, their normal usage for a period of time? I don't have that. On, I didn't. What was the question? Do you, um, the amount of that he's looking for an abatement and the bill that came from the water department, right? Is this, how much of abnormal is this over his normal usage? Seven or 8,000 cubic feet. Okay, so, so that had to be running for a while, right? Yeah, well, that would be a lot. One quarter to the next. So in, oh. in June, it was 4,500 cubic feet. And then in September, it was 10,500. Um. Did the water department give him an abatement for the half, for that four or 5,000 cubic feet or whatever? No. Yeah. No? No. Now, is, is his abatement request going back to 2018, 17, and 16, or just 19? <clears throat> So I averaged the I've averaged the um, the bill for the past from um, 1918, 17, and 2016. Yeah. The average was $260 a quarter based yeah. on the same time frame. And then I took the difference um, or in the case though I just did the math. The difference for when? Well, if I do it that way, the difference is um, his average bill for that time frame is two hundred and sixty dollars a quarter. Yeah. But um, if I take the difference between this last bill, it's seven hundred and eighty-one fifty-one is the difference. But in this case, I did the math on what he's requesting. I took the 7,000 cubic feet and did the math and came up with the 665.70 of what I'm asking to abate. Now, did this actually happen in 2019? 
No, this is the 2020 bill. It's it, it should be in the um the sheet that I that I folded. Yeah, I couldn't, um, can't, couldn't figure which email you had it in, so I. Can't. Oh, I'm sorry. It was one from yesterday. Late oh, one that, yeah. Late afternoon. That's the 98,500 uh, reading as opposed to 77,100. It's the difference between those two. Yeah, that's how they that's how they determine the usage. Okay. No. Um, yeah, they would go from the way they do the readings. I got you. The way they do the usage is they yeah they subtract the from the quarter before. So we need all right. We need um, we need a, a a a letter from the plumber saying what he fixed and where it was located. And then we'll reconsider this a request for an abatement. And yeah, <clears throat> and, that, and I'd ask for an invoice from them. And if there's, you know, if you took any photographs of the break or where it was or any of that sort of thing. Yes. Okay. All right. Yep. Next. 345 Forest Ave. She did have um, a sewer abatement back in 2011. Uh, my biggest problem with this is I can't read most of what she's writing here. I, it looks to me that somebody was investigating a problem with my irrigation, which has never been buried. And then other than that, I have, I have something weak. I can't read it. I think she's got to give us a, a clear. Oh, it says, but has not, which has now been turned off for the season. Okay, great. That's wonderful news. But what is, it does, it does not given us anything to, I mean, she's looking for 245, right? Yeah. And Well, if we've already given her an abatement already, do is she is she passed the one strike rule? If it's lifetime, she doesn't have a second meter. Doesn't appear so now. Mm -hmm. Lisa, is this where we have the sewer break on forest uh, during the spring? We did. Wasn't it in front of her house? 345? I'm not sure. Right next to it. Because when I went out to see what was going on, I got a, I got accosted by, by this one. I think it was her. I don't know who it was. but It was in that area. It might, might have been 339. Might have been... Uh, I can tell you. Yeah, I think you're right, Scott. I think it was 339. And you I think so, too. By the resident of 339. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah she wasn't happy. Nope. Because then there was a sinkhole or something in her, in yep. her uh, yep. driveway. So it was close. Well, they have a second meter that was put in in 2015. She does? It's what it says under the comments down below. No, it says new meter. The fourth four thirteen two thousand fifteen install second meter. Oh. Um, what happened? Well, I don't know if it says plumber questioned on procedures to install second meter. Concern with usage told her to call Aquarian for service call. Meter change to five eighths. On high usage to call Aquarian check four leaks. That was 1119, 19. High bill used irrigation, 11420, 2020. Told to call Lisa. So she never. Yeah, she, she's been fooling around. In 2012, it says questions on having second meter installed. She's been water gushing up to the in the front. Diane asked this. She's nuts. This, this is nuts. I mean, 
not nuts, but it's not, it's not our problem. If she has a second meter, then we're done. She never got built for it. But it appears she is. I mean, she, if she got a bill for it, I mean, I wonder, maybe she never even connected it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe she put, never put in the second meter. Well, well, yeah, you see the thing there about the, the second to last line, high bill used irrigation. So I don't know what that means, but... Um, but you're right, John. If she had the second meter, we wouldn't be talking about this. Right. Meter change. But I guess it comes back to, is that the one stripe too? Because she had already an abatement. Well, look at the twice, twice it's on there to install a second meter. Right? Yes, I see it. You know what? So, I mean, in other words, do it. But she probably figures that it's cheaper, you know, that the charge for a second meter is significant. Um, but actually, I wonder if the water department, Cohasset Water Department, because this is, this is um, Aquarian water. <laughs> yep. So is the Cohasset Water Department charging her a second meter fee when it's on Probably, right? Yeah, they're gonna. Even though, I don't know. I just think that it it doesn't. So the outstanding question is: Does she have a second meter that's operable? And then we can take a look at it. Yeah, I think she sends it well. I think we have somebody to go look at it because she could take a picture of her neighbor's second meter and we'd never know. So, um. well, I mean, if, if the Cohasset Water Department is charging uh, the second meter charge, and I don't know that they miss very many of those, if any, then um, we can determine right there whether she has a second meter or not. We don't even have to look. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one meter is in the cellar. I wonder if they both are. They're remotely red. I know that. Yeah, this one this one doesn't say uh, radio red on it like the other ones do. Ah. Well, Aquarian, I don't know how they yeah. do their readings. What What did Brenda have for comments on this? Lisa. She didn't really have any comments on it. She just sent she just sent her over to me. Okay. Could you could you ask her if they have a second meter and if so? Yeah. Um, if it's working. She might have it still in the box. Hello. Uh, now is not a good time. Okay. Okay, I think we should move on. Yep. And just table it. Okay, so last one we have Nine Little Harbor Road. Um, she Brenda said that the irrigation meter was coded incorrectly in the billing system, and that was for two quarters. So the packet that. Um, I sent over to you came from Brenda. Um, she filled out the um, abatement form for um, commitment one and for commitment two um, because it was for two quarters that this went, went by. But this is all from Brenda. Yeah, Brenda should pay for this one. Yeah, really. 
Anyway, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, I mean, if, if it's a mistake, then I think, you know, we approve it. So. Second. Five, All four, favor. It seems Five. high, though, for the, I guess if that's what it is. Wayne, are you okay to approve this? Yes. Okay. And then next on the um, other business, uh, Bill, you had asked to include the white paper, um, just um, the white paper comments from Gary to John. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We almost have to wait until uh, see what happens with the selectmen and the I think rather than uh, rather than go to all the effort of uh, addressing Gary's comments, which uh, <clears throat> were uh, quite reasonable from his position, until we've uh, resolved this other um, exercise, and then and then we could uh, consider the individual comments and whether or not it makes any sense to uh, spend time and effort including them in the uh, white paper uh, <clears throat> at all. Yeah, I agree. So uh, I just put that on hold until we get resolution of um, how many rocks need to be carried back to the um, bigger picture. Yep. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So I, I move we postpone consideration of his uh, well thought out uh, comments until a later date. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, can I can I uh, enter something now? Uh, still in the agenda. Sure. Okay. Lisa, terrific job finding the information about Matthew Shannon and the Templar House. You should have that. I think everybody got it in the in the uh, in the email. But this has to do with the three EDUs that he was allowed to transfer to three Howe Road and um, lots, um, and I think one might be on a, a different area there way back in 2013. And he had three years to do something. And three years from 2013 to sit up to like 2016. And in fact, um, there is a sewer commission um, made a move that Matthew Shannon and as owner of the real property known and numbered as 589 Jerusalem Road, Cohasset Mass also identified as the Templar House upon the discontinuance of the use of at least three EDUs at 589 Jerusalem Road, be and hereby is authorized to permit to assign up to no more than three EDUs to the lots described in the zoning opinion dated September 17, 2013, a copy of which opinion and exhibits are annexed hereto incorporated herein by reference and marked exhibit A. The right to assign the, the ex, shall expire th 36 months from the date of this vote and upon assignment of such permits, set an application for a building permit for the construction of a house on either of any or any of the lots 43, 44 and 15 Matthew Shanahan be and hereby is obligated to pay the sewer connection charge. And um, this means that the lot on 14 Windy Hill should not have had a sewer granted from the Templar House inventory. And there's another lot and maybe a third that the person who built the house on lot 14 is planning on buying from Matthew. So I think that uh, we... <coughs> Uh, we held uh, $9,000 for one EDU that uh, we felt was, was, um, was right um, because our plans initially were five bedrooms. 
uh, in conversations with the building inspector, he really said it should be four bedrooms because the plans in the house were built with revised plans that took out the fifth bedroom, even though the, the other, you know, even though it looks as though other rooms could be turned into a bedroom at any time because they have closets and bathrooms nearby and everything else instead of an office. But the most important thing is, I don't think these EDUs should be transferred at no cost in, in the future because I think the permits had expired and it's questionable what, so uh, I believe that a person buying a lot today can still buy an EDU, but they should be paying today's price, assuming we have the capacity and the fact that Shannon had paid a minimal amount years ago, but didn't fulfill his promise of where the houses were going to be unless houses were built at, at, at um, uh, at the address that they said. Uh, um, which is the thing to say. They are, um, basically they're on Howe Road. I'm trying to um, give you the exact locations, but, um, Wayne, do you think we should have him come to our next meeting? At least zoom into us. Well, I think that I think that we should be telling the um, building department uh, not to issue any more permits on these. First of all, the thing is, it is it is what should be done right now. I was the one that signed off on the on the sewer thing to do the three lots. You know, lot 44, 43, 44, and 15 um, originally, but also one of the ones that had time frames put in about when he could do it. Now, you know, until today, I didn't, I didn't have my my mind and stuff isn't going to say when did when did he come in before the board and stuff like that and do this, um, and so finding the this in a file was terrific for Lisa. Um, and I think that it, it um, you know, it's something that should be followed. And Bob Egan got a copy of this originally, as well as, of course, Diane uh, Henley from the Sewer Commission. So um, my feeling is that we should talk to Bob and say, Bob, we found some correspondence. If uh, these lots are to be built on now, that they should be paying the, the current connection fee um, and not not and not no fee. I agree. Um, <clears throat> a couple of comments. I think I'm right in saying that uh, state law does not allow the uh, sewer commission to quote reserve capacity end quote. Now that <clears throat> this would seem to be kind of an in-betweener in, in, in a way because the uh, connection of the uh, <clears throat> fee was originally paid and, and the owner of that uh, fee was given a time frame in which to uh, transfer the already paid fee at apparently no additional cost. I think it would be quite reasonable and generous, although maybe skating on a little thin ice when it comes to that reservation question, but it sounds like a complicated legal issue in a way, that we, uh, at, at a minimum, uh, require the new homeowner to pay the difference in today's connection fee and the um, fee that was paid uh, for the original connection at the Templar house. The, the, um, and it'd also be good to uh, have the owner uh, come in and um, make his case as to why he doesn't think he should have to pay anything even though he has violated the agreement that was given by the uh, sewer commission in 2013. 
Well, that's reason number one. You know, that's the prime reason. I mean, yes. What part of a contract don't you like? So I'm not going to do it. Right. So, exactly. So he, he, he's he's had issues with the town before and on skirting around things. And so I, I don't I don't know. Um, but yeah, we should probably have him come into our next meeting. Lisa, if you could do that. That's Matt Shannon. Yes. Um, I think we're the the town is a little bit liable or you know for the house at 14 um, Windy Hill Road because um, <clears throat> they went ahead and allowed the building permit they did the whole thing it, it sewer was was apparently considered as being taken care of um, he, he ended up doing a, a four bedroom house <clears throat> whatever we want to say uh, but the building inspector and zoning enforcement officer believes that that that's the case um, but um, who the, I don't see where the, the homeowner is going to say, wait a minute, I'm going to, I'll pay the extra money. The builder is saying, wait a minute, I went on and built this based on this, under the premise that it was the sewer permit was all paid for and it was okay and it was transferred and all that. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying that he had permission to transfer them to these lots. I don't know if lot 43, 44, 15 were ever built on. And he and the premise was that when he came before the board, he said, I have them under agreement and I want to uh, be able to do this. Um, and in his original letter asking for this on February, September 5th, 2013, um, and it said, you know, that he wanted to transfer them. Uh, he has them under agreement with Karen Diab. The lots are looking here, and this is where it's going to go. And that has changed without any letters or permission or anything like that by the by the, by the sewer department. So I, I think 100% of the liability is on him, period. Because he probably didn't tell the new homeowner anything. or I mean, he obviously hasn't told anybody anything. You know, he um, forgot that he had this permission, but he did. Right, but uh, but by the time he exercised the permission, there was no permission. Not to uh, muddy the water, but um, I seem to recall him coming back at one point in time and talking about him moving one of those Diab lots to Windy Hill. And it was that sometime later but I seem to have a recollection of that. Do you think it was one or do you think it was all three? I think it was just one. I looked at the uh, aerial fly. Um, what were the three lots you said? Wait, I don't have that package. Okay. Um, the sad thing is that they have a lot, but I have, I have a plan. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So um, 43, 44, and 15. And um, it's they're right off of Howe Road. Okay, I really have, close uh, to Jerusalem Road. Okay, just a couple of lots in. Yeah, so it doesn't really match up to the assessors, so I can't tell. But see that at all? Uh, hold it up a little higher. Up, oh, yeah. I can forward this to you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. Um, now, at the time, um, yeah, I'm looking at 19 um, aerial photos. I don't see any of those lots occupied currently. I mean, in any case, I think what, uh, what you mentioned is probably appropriate. Have them come in. Yes. And it said the motion of this approved at, at sewer commission meeting held on Wednesday, September 18th. Chairman Baldwin re recused himself due to a potential conflict of interest. Member Sachuk and Member McGowan both voted to approve the motion. 
Um, and so I'm not sure whether one or something of these lots might have been um, gone to, gone to uh, Baldwin. They did, because remember, Wayne, in that meeting, that his ex-wife came to it, sort of sat in the audience. Mm -hmm. She came to a couple, but certainly on this one, I remember it. And, and it was, because Brian was pretty, like he was a little uncomfortable about the whole thing, so. Mm -hmm. And they bought a lot. So they bought one of those lots. They uh, built a house on it and sold it. And then, and then they went their separate ways. Yeah. My recollection, anyway. Yeah. As of June 2019, the aerial photo I have shows no buildings on any of those lots. On what, the, uh, what year? This is uh, June 2019. Wow. Well, in any case, there, the fact that they, they had a three-year three life to be used and at a specific place, and then they show up X number of years later, you said maybe he... Yeah, I, like I said, I think I have a recollection of him coming in and transferring or trying to transfer them to, over to Windy Hill. And it may have been two lots, but I think there might have been something after that. I'm thinking it was probably a year later or something like that, but it may be hard to find in the, in the minutes. Okay. Well, we, let's invite him in and then see, and then uh, Lisa, see if you can find anything else more current. Okay. Maybe by, I don't know, it's, it's, it's tough to go back and you can discuss something in five minutes from someone in the audience and it might not get picked up. <clears throat> well, I think something like that would be recorded, though. Yeah. <clears throat> when is our next meeting, by the way? I was late signing in. Um, the 1st of December. 1st of December. Mm. As in December 1. You got it. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock. And that's also the day that the selectmen meet to consider the easement question. Yes. In the evening. So. All right. Guys, I got to get off. I have to, I have another call in like five minutes that I have to prep for. So. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All, right, all, right, all in favor? Bye. Aye. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Bye.